talk about tonight. So again, uh, for people that just joined, my name is Jamar Nicholas. I'm a, a Philadelphia native uh, and also a resident. Uh, I'm a professional cartoonist, graphic novelist, and author. Uh, I've uh, won a few awards for some of my work over the past 25 years. Uh, my newest big uh, acquisition is that I just uh, landed an authorship deal with Scholastic Graphics, where uh, I will be drawing several books of, in my Leon series. So my first book, Leon the Extraordinary, will be out by uh, uh, Scholastic Graphics this time next year. I'm very excited. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Isabel. It's really nice. Uh, so let's start off with the story. I hope you guys feel like sharing, right? Let's put on our, put on our story hats and just um, kind of get into a vibe. <clears throat> I'm sure everybody has a favorite story from their childhood or a story that always gets told whenever your family's together or when Nana comes over and says some very embarrassing thing that you don't wanna talk about in mixed company. Um, one of my favorite stories from my childhood was um, when uh, I think I was like four or five, I was a giant Spider-Man fan. And this is old Spider-Man before it was like cool with, you know, multi-million dollar movie Spider-Man. This was like basic 67 hokey cartoon Spider-Man. And if you're from the seventies, you may remember there was a, a really bad Spider-Man television show. That's kind of what I grew up on. So I was in this place where I was running around our house in West Philly, singing the Spider-Man theme and shooting my webs. That's my, my web shooters there. You know, obviously there's nothing coming out of my wrist, but that's what imagination's for. Um, one day I was unsupervised and that kind of happened a lot in the seventies. <laughs> Anybody that grew up in the seventies or eighties. And, um, I wound up in the kitchen and I was going to um, jump from a high height uh, on my spider web. So somehow I got on top of the refrigerator and I think they made appliances bigger when we were little, but this thing was huge. Climbed up on the thing, I, I uh, exclaimed Spider-Man <laughs> and I leaped off the top of the refrigerator. <laughs> or to the hard, cold floor. Now, I don't know if there's any medical professionals or nurses or anything like that in a room, but the legend goes that I almost knocked my lung out of place. Can you do that? I don't know exactly what happened, but my mother came and found me minutes later heaving, and the next thing you know, I wound up, I wind up in Children's Hospital. <laughs> um, and the, the, the way that the story ends is that uh, right next to me in the in the bed next to me in a room was a girl who broke her arm because she thought she was Wonder Woman. So yay, super friends. Yay. <laughs> uh, so what I wanted to try to share with you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen. I didn't test this, so I hope this works. Uh, second camera. Oh, wow, look at that, okay. So hopefully we can get the get that focus in a little bit. But this is a memoir comic I did for Arcadia Magazine. Sorry for the weird positioning. The longer we're here, the more I'll figure this out. And this is the story I just told you. So I'm gonna try to pull this back a little bit. There you go. So uh, up here is a, wow, it's really tight. Hold on a second. There you go. I don't wanna double vision anybody. Uh, there's me telling this yarn. And then we kind of set the stage for the 70s where we see this lady with the Afro and I decided to put the dialogue inside her Afro, right? Um, there we see little Jamar. I don't know why this is so out of focus, but we'll work on it. Um, where I'm trying to build in here, hopefully somebody goes, oh, look at little Jamar, right? Holding my Spider-Man doll. Um, and then I give a shout out, maybe I'm too far away, there you go. Then I give a shout out to that Spider-Man live action show, which was just a very weird, creepy looking character. He had like colanders for eyes and his very chunky web and me spending a lot of time in front of the television. And you know, a lot of people our age kind of grew up that way. And then here we go, here's the story of me using my imagination, climbing 
up climbing up walls in my mind, but I'm really sliding down to stucco walls in my house. And there's the fridge. And here we go, climbing up, whip, jump, boom. So in this little story, I don't get to tell uh, the tale about the little girl, but you get it. So what I'm trying to do here is create with this kind of like sweet caricature of me, uh, hoping that you will kind of connect with the story in a different way. So beyond me just saying, hey, you know what, when I was a kid, I jumped off the fridge, like, okay, that's a cool story. But what I'm trying to do and what I hope I do in a lot of my work is have some sort of lasting connection with the reader, right? You want to tell stories that people feel obviously empathy for, but also kind of connect in a, either, uh, wow, I feel sorry for them, I feel bad for them, I feel something for them, or that there's a connection like, oh, I ha that happened to me, or I understand how you must have felt because that happened to me or someone in my life. Um, I'm going to stop this for a second. And kind of set a couple more stages. So if anybody saw the, sorry, my dog, <laughs> that's, that's the, the, the wonder, the magic of Zoom. So some of you uh, who may have registered for this event saw um, the flyer, which uh, had a, a black and white image with a little boy looking at a jacket. Uh, that is from this book here, Fist, Stick, Knife, Gun, uh, a history of violence, personal history of violence, which was a book that I adapted with uh, uh, from the memoirs of Jeff Canada, who is a um, uh, prominent uh, educator and uh, kids activist in New York. Uh, it's less about this guy growing up in the, in the South Bronx, but more about the secret life of city kids, right? So when I designed this book and the, the story within it, I wanted anybody to be able to connect with this scared kid. It's less about this person named Jeff Canada and more about the feeling of being scared in a big place where you don't have a lot of options. So um, the story real quick uh, that I um, put on that flyer was from the first chapter of this book. And I'll just kind of show this real quick uh, where we see little Jeff that should be used to this by now, who's four, who has a lot of responsibility on him. Uh, his brothers go to the park, uh, and then his big brother John comes home, and he doesn't have his jacket. So uh, if any of you from that, that time frame, you kind of know what happens next. Your mother says, where's the jacket? Oh, Ma, somebody took it from me. I, can I get another one? No, you need to go back out there and get that jacket. You know, you know the routine. <laughs> So, you know, Jeff is now in this place where he's being introduced to violence at such an early age. And like, what does that do to you, right? And we all have uh, grown up with a lot of kind of trauma in that way. I mean, you could, sometimes you don't register it as that. But when I'm doing books like this, I'm trying to figure out how am I going to make somebody care who didn't grow up like this? How am I going to make somebody pick this book up who doesn't have an emotional connection to a story like that? but may feel something in their heart to like, or even learn more about uh, somebody who didn't grow up the same way they did. Okay. So um, what I wanna try to do with us tonight is work on uh, memory uh, and work on maybe starting a really small snippet of a character design that you can create that you think may resonate with a reader. Uh, it could be a self, uh, study like a self-portrait or maybe a full body picture if you're if you're uh, uh, proficient at drawing like that if you aren't I don't want to make you struggle but you know I've seen some really expressive stick figures in my time um, and figure out beyond you drawing yourself because it's yourself and you know how you are and how you feel and the, the stories you've had is are there are there touch points on a character that you can maybe uh, find something to hang some emotion to. Like if you were a, a, a young person who uh, didn't sleep very well, you might have like bags under your eyes at an early age. And I know a lot of teenagers that have that like zombie face because they don't really don't sleep a lot. 
um, adding adding little ticks like that to your character design could start to make the reader ask questions that aren't visibly uh, available or readily available. Uh, so I'm going to switch the camera back and I, I started to work on something. So this would be a great time where, you know, we're going to talk and draw. Um, there's really not a lot of time in the program where, you know, I expect anybody to do a comic book page, but maybe this could be the start. Um, and I'm going to move this around a little bit. Um, try to find a better connection for this. Sorry, I don't want to make anybody seasick. I'll try to land this plane really fast. There you go. <laughs> Sorry about that. So what I've drawn right here real fast, and I think it'll get a little clearer as I start to ink it, was a picture of, uh, is a, a high school memory of what I looked like going to school on the subway in Philly as I went to a creative and performing arts high school here in Philly. And I was such a problem on the subway because I had this giant portfolio. And I remember ripping the hell out of some lady's stocking on the subway. <laughs> and you know, like if you've ever been on a, you know, just you're lucky you got out of the house on time, but then, you know, you got your outfit together, then some idiot kid <laughs> just rips rips your stocking wide open. And, you know, I was so embarrassed. Um, and I have a lot of memories of being a teenager and most of them always revolve around that kind of stuff, feeling awkward, feeling um, alone in, in a couple of different ways and bewildered a lot. Oh, shit, sorry. So I have I had this picture I wanted to share. I don't know if you could see that. So the little posing kid in the red, that's me. So uh I created this character of me with that same kind of look. And I've been drawing, I have a couple of memoirs in my head to draw at some point, but what I'm trying to get along in this character design is like bad posture, um, being kind of like a tall gangly kid to somebody on the subway or somebody that I might encounter in the street, I may look menacing, right? Just cause I'm a tall black kid and that's enough especially back in the 80s is enough to kind of give somebody pause. But, you know, I'm so worried about my own life and, you know, how I'm going to get through the day or which way I'm going to get home without getting jumped after school. I'm not worried about robbing somebody. So, you know, when I'm trying to tell stories like that, those are the things that I'm more interested in talking about or going over than what people usually think happens with a young person in the city. So, you know, again, I'll invite you to work on your own character design, or maybe if you have a, a a really strong memory or an image in your head that maybe you can start drawing. And I'm hoping by the by the middle end of our session we can do some sharing. So if anybody wants to um, share what they've been working on a little further into the session, I'd love to do that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to switch my camera off. I'm going to try to clean the lens. Maybe that'll help. And then if anybody has any questions while we're getting started, the, the believer will let me know and maybe we can answer the question. Thank you guys. Thanks to all the people that are joining today. I know Fridays are precious. So I appreciate I appreciate the the eyeball. Uh, are there any questions, believe? Anything we can talk about? Mm -hmm. While I get my setup together over here. No. Okay. Well, let me take a look through the chat real quick. Nope. So far, so good. Okay. All right. All right, let's get back to some drawing. Oh, look at that. See what happens when you when you clean the screen. 
That's a lot better. All right, let me try to do that. All right, so I'm just going to start inking this guy and see what I come up with. <clears throat> and I'm just going to kind of talk and work. Uh, one of the big things with me is the eyes. I mean, it seems kind of obvious, but uh, kind of like the eyes are the window to the soul. And uh, one thing I teach in a lot of my workshops is not short selling emotion you can get out of very kind of simple designs um kind of like big soulful eyes that may not know as much as you think they do um can maybe make you feel a little bit i don't know i don't want to say sorry but interested um i remember saying to somebody not too long ago especially about boys because i was a boy that for the most part, the world doesn't care what a 17 year old boy thinks about, <laughs> you know, have you ever sat somewhere and went, oh, wow, Ricky, that's, that's really great. that You told me that, <laughs> you know, it's just kind of like out of sight, out of mind. And, you know, uh, people like me uh, really kind of grew up in a, a seen, not heard world. Uh, and, you see a lot of kids, especially from where I grew up, try to find a voice and sometimes maybe not the best way. You know, I think there's a lot more tools now for kids, but, you know, I, you know, found a voice riding the subways and writing on walls when I was a kid, you know? Um, and I, as an adult, I'm fully aware of what property damage looks like and all that, but, as a kid, it made sense that I just wanted people to hear what I had to say or see what I left behind, kind of like a, a legacy thing that happens with kids, especially when you come from a place where you're not expected to live very long. So there's an immediacy to leaving a mark. Um, Jamar, do you have any tips for drawing a character who's very different from yourself? so kind of like are you asking in a way like are you trying to make something that has nothing to do with you you know kind of like outside of what how you are um i mean david says he's an older guy but what if he wanted his character to be like a younger girl for example oh okay i think with something like that it would just especially in the world we live in now i think if you can be as authentic as possible with your character I think that would that'll really um, hold people's attention and ring true. And what I mean like that is, you know, as best you can try to, you know, study how teenagers operate or look or dress. One of my favorite comic strips is Zitz from uh, uh, Jerry Scott and Jim Borgman. Uh, they're good friends of mine. And you know, Jim has been drawing that strip for a long time. It's almost been like 30 years, but it still feels fresh. Like he understands what teenagers are like and how they kind of their body language and their, and their motion and their emotions. And, but he, you know, he's the furthest from a teenage boy. And there's also a lot of uh, girls in this trip. So I think if you kind of look at anything like that as almost homework, right? How am I going to find this character that is not me and make her feel like a real person. So um, I hope that you're kind of doing research just as an artist, you know, are you kind of studying your subject um, or trying to find something that um, would like, you know, there's gotta be a reason you want to have uh, this girl as your character. So like what makes her tick? You know, and then on top of that, learning about her, it's just like, how do you make it feel real? So um, I would, you know, do some field work, field study. If you have kids, you know, um, just kind of watch them for a while and just see how they interact with the world and, you know, 
kind of what a, a modern teenager uh, has to go through versus somebody who who's our age or a little older. I hope that was a good answer. And Elisa is wondering if you could tell us what supplies you use to make uh, this page. Sure. Okay. So what I'm working on right now is just a 11 by 17 Bristol board. Uh, you can buy this stuff on Amazon. It's fairly easy to get your hands on. Um, and because I draw comics, uh, I generally draw it 11 by 17 with a 10 by 15 border around it, if you see that. Um, they also sell comic book pages that are pre-printed that have all that has all the rulings and stuff already laid out in non-photo blue. That's not necessary that you get that. Um, but this is this is kind of what I use. Um, also, this is one of my favorite pens. This is a brush pen. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, this is a Kuretake brush pen. Uh, you can get these if you have any kind of like um kind of like Asian gift shops in your area, you might find these there. Uh, what's cool about these is that you can change the cartridges in it and put new ink in it, which is cool because they're kind of expensive. So you can buy extra cartridges and just keep moving rather than having to throw this whole thing out. Um, I'm a big fan of brush pens. The thing I like about brush pens is that it, you get a whole, a very different type of line with your um, strokes versus, you know, just a plain marker or something that you can't vary your thick, thin widths with. Um, I usually tell um, young cartoonists that to a point your supplies don't matter, but then they do at the same time. It's kind of, it's kind of a, a, a mean trick to say, you can draw with whatever you have around, but if you're trying to do semi-pro work, I would say the best thing is to do is to get things that are uh, archival. Like you can get the wrong kind of pen that'll just turn purple in a drawer after seven years. If you've ever had any artwork that somebody did with a Sharpie and then you look at it eight years later and it's just the alcohol has started to run and it's like ruined the drawing. Um, just try to get archival ink. Uh, there's a really good set of pens, Faber Castell pit pens. If you've if you've ever used those, they're like black barrel pens. Are easy to find at like the Mark Michaels Arts and Crafts, or Microns or things like that. Just something that you know won't bleed out over time. And good paper is always helpful. Um, so I was drawing this, and I'm so mad at my camera, it's not amazing. Um, <clears throat> I was drawing this, this image of a, a young me on the subway with this giant portfolio. And um, I actually hated bringing this thing back and forth through town to go to school. Um, there are some kids who just left their portfolio at school, but I knew if this got stolen, my mother would, would have a problem. So I had to lug it back and forth home all the time. Um, and it's just kind of, you know, on top of just it being big and awkward, uh, it also you know, mark me as a high school kid. Oh, an art nerd, even worse than that. So, you know, you can't be super cool with this giant portfolio <laughs> banging into people on the bus. So it almost ruined the day when I had to kind of bring this in because I had a critique at school or I had homework that I had to, you know, have this with me. How's everybody doing with the drawings? Um, and some, you know, some other things to talk about with this. I put some notes down um, up here. I guess I can only read it. So just, just for the definition, empathy, the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. Um, one would hope that that's something that 
you're kind of striving for in your work. I know that being a cartoonist or drawing personal stories is cathartic in its own way for you, but you also want to hand it to somebody and hope that they feel something something from it, right? That's that's a big part of storytelling, right? You kind of you're leaving this thing for someone to discover and hopefully they, you know, the best thing, the best feeling in the world is for somebody to take your book and hug it. Have you ever seen that? It's like, oh, I love this book, right? Um, there's just some work that you have to do to make sure you're creating engaging stories, engaging characters, things that resonate with people in different ways. So uh, some, some other things about uh, drawing from memory or memoir is think about, you know, the, this is easy. What do you remember? Like when I started the session with that Spider-Man story, that is burned in my head. I could tell you that story at any dinner party <laughs> at the drop of a dime. And I'm sure you have things like that too. Things, you know, we've been alive for some time now, but there's maybe five or six or seven or eight things that are really strong in your memory or your recollection. Why? Why is that? Uh, some other things that I wanted to add to that uh, when you're trying to recall uh, things from the past or memory uh, and just in maybe your, I don't know, your mental note taking is not just clothes, right? Because especially if you watch a lot of television or you just see how, you know, things are kind of regurgitated these days, the eighties is not a neon shirt in arcade games and Ghostbusters, right? And us that grew up in an era know there was a lot more going on than that, but that's easily digestible. So like beyond just those really easy things, like what about color? Like I know I have a lot of memory that involves color uh, I grew up in Philadelphia that if you've ever seen that old uh, Eddie Murphy movie, Trading Places, that's the Philly I grew up in. It was grimy and it was smoggy and dirty. And I, and I would say to people, I feel like that Philadelphia to me felt like a dirty camera lens, like somebody smeared like Vaseline across the lens that you're looking through. That's the city I grew up in. And I think that's pretty like descriptive, but you know, that era and time and that feeling of the city resonates really strongly with me. And I think it's a good kind of a character to kind of base things around. So, you know, what about color sensations um, and any other emotional connections? You know, uh, if you had a story about that willow tree in front of your mother's house, what was it about it? You know, maybe the story was, you know, you buried the family cat underneath it <laughs> or you broke your arm because you fell off of it. You know, those kind of connections to things are really strong and also are really strong to the person it happened to. So when you're storytelling, you have to figure out a way to open that up so that somebody can can go inside and feel it for themselves. Uh, some other things to add to that are when you're thinking of recollecting memory. Uh, think about years, dates, periods of time, or even seasons. Uh, you know, some strong storytelling will kind of evoke seasonal things without having to explain it, like leaves are blowing down the street. So you quickly, quickly get the idea that it's fall, right? Or obviously winter is snow. That's an easy one, you know, or, you know, spring, where it's very sunny, but there's, you know, the, the foliage is out and you might have a light jacket on. So, you know, all those things are kind of tools in your belt to use to help your story along. It's not all just, you know, when, you know, Kenny fell down the stairs, you know, you kind of have to set a, a, a bigger stage for things like that. So one little placeholder I'm putting on here is, I don't know if you can see this, uh, 80s Jamar is wearing his Africa medallion that you could get from the avenue, as we used to call it. Every neighborhood had 
an avenue that wasn't in center city that you could go and do shopping and get like cheap knockoffs of things. And a big thing when I was in school were leather Africa medallions. This was kind of like a kind of like a black pride thing, but it turned into a trend and people just, you know, had these things just to have them. Then the next thing you know, kids started robbing you for them. And they're, they're like five bucks. You can just go buy your own, but it was just something else to get stolen from you. But I remember having one of those and it was kind of like anti gold chains uh, for anybody that kind of remembers that era of time. Like you saw, especially in the urban areas, kids wearing lots of like big gold. I'll do gold with quote marks. I don't really know how real any of that stuff was, but it was flashy and it was as expensive as it was going to be for a kid. And there was kind of a movement for some kids that weren't into that to kind of you know, wear something around their neck, but it wasn't, you probably weren't going to get robbed for it. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Uh, yeah, Laura is wondering, um, do you have any tips on drawing facial features or how do you know how detailed uh, you need to draw it in order to convey emotions? Oh yeah, thank you. That's a great question. Uh, your secret weapon or eyebrows. I think that's something that really gets... Um, eyebrows don't get a, a lot of love <laughs> uh a lot of cartoons i know and me included for a while i got rid of it uh one of our secret weapons is keeping a, a mirror a mirror near your drafting table or you could use your cell phone and take a selfie rather than to put on instagram take a selfie and make faces and see how your face facial uh structure changes when you make different um, um, emotions or different faces your eyebrows do a lot of heavy lifting <laughs> i gotta make myself laugh there but um you know arched eyebrows could uh evoke uh surprise um or you know furrowed brows is anger or distrust um, i think we put a lot of emphasis on just eyes but the eyebrows really help also, um, again, like I said at the beginning of this, like maybe just like a flick underneath an eye to give a, a, a little bit of weariness. Especially when you're cartooning, you don't have to go overboard. Um, maybe a couple of wrinkles in the forehead could uh, uh, show how uh, the age of the character. It's almost a less is more thing, but the, the lines you do want to put on your face should mean something. Um, and I, I think the eyebrows are really good. A good, uh, a, a good marker. Um, again, you know, and you could also just try and take some photo booth pictures of yourself if you're on a mat and just make faces and see how your face contorts. Um, you'll find that you're probably probably been short changing your own cartooning by not looking at reference. Thank you. And Jamar, should folks um, should folks be writing anything, or should they just be focusing on the character? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you can. I forgot about writers. I'm sorry. Um, if you want to kind of like jot down maybe the kernels of the story or a mem uh, memory, I'd love to hear those too. Um, uh, I do feel like a lot of stories are stronger if you kind of worked on the character design it's not you know you know i'm not grading you <laughs> here but it all just kind of helps at the end of the at the end of the the, the road to have as much uh reference that, that you can um, i mean you could just put like a stick figure in the kitchen and then the dog runs through and knocks the stick figure over and it breaks its arm. <laughs> I feel like all of my memories are so violent. I'm sorry, you guys. I'll come up with a memory where I petted a, a puppy and he licked my face and we had ice cream. The end. Uh, uh, maybe that will balance out some of all these breaking bones I keep talking about. But yeah, if you're a writer and you want to write, please write. Thanks. And I think we're coming up on the sharing is caring portion of our session so um not to say pencils down but if anybody is getting to a stage where they want to maybe share what they've been working on um you can uh 
maybe raise your hand, believer staff, or uh, raise your digital hand with the Zoom emoji, or get in the chat, and they'll they'll get they'll get you on screen. And while we wait for people to share, Eric is wondering how you know when a page or a drawing is finished. Oh man, that's the age old question. Well, really, you know what? There's a thing where, uh, and I said this not too long ago, uh, not to be glib, but if you're on a deadline and you think it's done, it's done, right? But if you're just, you're drawing to draw, or you're drawing to just um, have fun, you know when something is, it's almost like a gut feeling, you know when you're done and then you go too far, right? There's nothing worse than feeling like you're done and then you just like screw up the face by adding something where I'm gonna use a marker. Oh no, the marker bled, oh. Um, you should go with your gut. If you feel it's done, it's done. Um, that feeling gets less and less strong the more work you do. Um, and it also gets less and less strong the more practice you do. So if you're keeping a sketchbook, if you're keeping, if you're like doing drawing almost daily or weekly or whatever, it gets less precious, right? It's almost like the 10,000 hours of mastery type of thing. The more you draw, the less you feel that the drawing you did is special. So you're apt to stop faster than you took one thing and you've been working on the same drawing for days or weeks. And then it's kind of like, oh, let me put some more bells and whistles on here. So I think just um, doing more work will help strengthen that 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 uh, feeling in your gut. Hope that answered that question. That's a great question. Man. Yo, <laughs> Zozy, you're up. <laughs> Yo, what are we looking at here? Hello. Um, hi, sorry. Hang on. No Hold worries. On. Fix my screen. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So I drew a picture of myself mm -hmm. and I was just doodling when I, when you said, when you talked about the willow tree and I just automatically started drawing a tree. So, <laughs> so I'm standing here. Uh -huh. there's leaves in my hair and I have a pencil behind my ear I'm holding a book bag and I just went to the bookstore so I'm I'm holding a book by its rim because I usually do that uh -huh. and I'm just wearing like a sweater and some shorts wow that's fantastic thanks well thank you and you you felt really inspired by the tree reference right I love trees <laughs> oh wow that's fantastic Great yeah. job. Thank you for sharing. Hello. You're, you're good. You're good. <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. So sorry. I just had, anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So that's my memory of high school. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's awesome. I'm I didn't quite get done with the shading, but. <laughs> I'm not waiting to be asked to dance, no matter what you think. Oh, I love that. Wow, that's so strong. <laughs> I love, is that, the, is that a little disco ball up there? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm that old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I know all about the disco ball. That's yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And hey. you ink that too, right? Did you ink, did you just draw that in ink or did you pencil it? I actually penciled it really quickly and then um, I have a uh, Pentel uh, pocket brush. Pocket, pocket brush, yeah. Those are yeah, great. and then I also have one that's got watered down that I'm starting to do the coat, the shading. Oh, like, a, like a wash with, wow, that's great. Yeah. Oh, great, thank you, thank, thank you. you so much. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> This is a picture of me uh, with my new bike that I liked, but it was a girl's bike because I was a total tomboy and I had flowers on the seat and flowers on the basket. And I didn't like that part. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. What did, <laughs> what did you color that with? Um, just these water-based nylon markers. 
Oh, that's fantastic. I love that bike. I hate drawing bikes. That's a fantastic <laughs> bike. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. Hello. I can't hear you. Unmute, please. I just finished a film about myself, actually. So here's some uh, more drawings I did. Oh, wow. Uh, and then I, I drew a little comic about when my roommate was told to stay inside because of COVID, and oh. I immediately locked us out. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's yeah. great. You did all that during this session? You're fast. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, wow. No, thank you. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? Hello. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm great, thank you. What you got? <laughs> Thanks for all your inspiration. Um, oh. I drew this little version of me. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. I must have been like 10 or something, but I feel like in my childhood, I have a lot of experiences with people kind of being mean to me, like family and stuff. So yeah. I kind of went with that perspective. Yeah. And um, yeah, so it's kind of me being like, kind of mad and sad <laughs> yeah and I, I, I love her outfit <laughs> but you know the, yeah. the the biggest tell for that is the body language like the arms wrapped around like trying to create armor around yourself with your you know the body language is very telling wow it's very powerful thank you for that what are yeah. you going to write in that last panel when that last word balloon what's going to go in there I don't know. I well, I was I was thinking about this specific time in the car when my when I said like I think I said the word stupid. Mm. My brother always said it, so that was yeah. the reason I said it. But then, um, but then I was like, they told me like, no, you can't say that. So then I was thinking of writing something like that, maybe like a more specific memory or something. Mm, wow. Yeah. They, I've been reading about uh, uh, what do you call it? Self editing, like. If somebody tells you you can't do something, it stops you from doing it in the future. Wow. Thank you so much. That was really that was really strong. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Hello. Hello, Jamar. Hello. This is uh, Barry from San Francisco. Hey. So I uh, this is just kind of a drawing of me as like 10 years old. I was like really skinny and yeah. emaciated. Wow. Um, but uh, this is a story from the summer of 72. Um, All these know. cool bikes, man. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this must be a mini bike. Uh, <laughs> that was my first experience on a mini bike. And, you know, older friend came and said, hey, you want to ride? Yeah. And, of course, we, you know, we didn't have helmets or anything. No. We speeding along on the sidewalk. And he starts to do, like, a... Uh, you know, like a, oh, like a wheelie wheelies, right? And of course, I'm not holding on. I fly off. Oh, and you know, I fall, you know, on the ground. <laughs> and you know, then I had that like giant knee scab. Oh, for that whole summer. <laughs> um, yeah. I love, yeah, I love, I love the action. And I love how graphic that scab is. <laughs> wow, Thank that's you. that's strong. And I love that character design. It's very. That was very uh, powerful. Thanks, Barry. That was great. Sure. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, so I drew little Emily. Emily is me. So myself when I was younger, um, uh -huh. when it, we were talking about like strong emotions, I was thinking about like the nervousness and the fear I had of going on the bus to go to the summer camp that I went to. Oh, so this is my first time really trying to capture like emotion in like the eyes and the eyebrows, but um, mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, that bus, <laughs> even just thinking about it now really brings it back, but. Well, you, well, you know what I'm, I'm loving about your drawing is just like the, there's like this, the earnestness in her face and like her eyes and then the smile, yeah. which is kind of like, that's the mask right there, right? You're probably like, oh, in your head, but you know, like the worried smile is, like, exactly. like, is the armor. Wow. Right, I know. Looking back at all the pictures from then, I was smiling so big, but I could also tell that I was really nervous and scared too. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. You guys are inspiring me. Hello. 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 What's, what's <laughs> going on? So I drew, this is me 
Oh, wow. Another big French horn. And my mother decided it was a really good idea to make me cycle to school uh. with the French horn on my back. <laughs> Five oh. miles. How heavy is a French horn? Well, it's not as heavy as you imagine a huge brass tubey thing would be. It's not a tuba, right. but um, it's it's pretty heavy for a um, like for a thirteen year old. And, and it's in a case too, right? It's yes, a... it's in a gigantic black hard case <laughs> in case it got damaged oh no never, you know never mind about me being damaged no 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 i remember that like what do you mean you broke it <laughs> but what about me i broke my arm yeah. <laughs> that was not allowed. <laughs> that's fantastic thank you and another bike there's a lot of bike memories yeah i'm not very good at drawing bikes but that one just seemed to work so oh, i'm you... channeling that inner awkwardness that was great Thanks, thank Mark. You. Thank you, and I love your sketchbook. Hello. Hello. Hey. I'm Natalie. Hey. Nice, now. nice to meet you. A drawing of a drawing. Oh. Um, so this is me as a kid, and I remember, or I know from photos that I just feel like I had a really big head, <laughs> and my mom would cut my bangs, but I was always <laughs> moving around, so there's always, like, kind of jagged. Yeah. And... I actually remember my mom taking a photo of me holding this drawing. I think it was around the time that my parents were getting divorced. Oh, and wow. I, like I had a lot of like voice at that time. So I was just drawing it out and I was really good at mean mugging all the time. <laughs> that was like those, that was my voice, you know, through the yeah. and through my art. Wow. Do you still have that picture? Do you know where that picture is? I do not. I have a few photos from that time period but I keep thinking like I wonder if it's in a photo album somewhere wow that's really strong I would love to read that story that's amazing thank okay. you <laughs> hello hi thanks so much for your time um I was drawing this of like being in high school and just sitting alone at lunch uh -huh. and and your story of comic books was making me think of like the Joker gas of like all the cool kids with friends laughing and like coming down to the area that I'm sitting at. And I kind of <laughs> like, I've worn glasses forever. So I tried to use my glasses as those eyebrows too, a little bit. Nice. And those. Oh, that's but great. That's just great. Like and lunch. <laughs> that's a great cartooning. I love it. Thanks. It feels very, very, very solitary at the same time. Right. Well, especially, sparse. Yeah. Right. Especially being in a cafeteria where you can feel so alone in a giant group of people. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Sorry about that. Um, oh, you're, you're good. So back when I was 10. Uh, yeah, I that's seminary school. And um, it was. Uh, where am I? You right there. Good. It was. I'm tried. I tried to draw it smug and a little <laughs> scared at the same time, which came out very plain. <laughs> but um, so I, I drew uh, the next part is uh, there's like a dozen kids, so I just drew a crowd. Um, after uh, a session of um, um, the seminary school and and church and stuff like that, we we are required to take a shower. Mm. Um, and I, we, at home, we always had towels sitting outside the showers and they were, didn't think about it. We were supposed to pack our own. Um, so here I am without one. Oh no. And I asked every kid if I could borrow one and, or, you know, use it after they're done or whatever. And it was, the cruelty was pretty apparent. Yeah. Um, very antithetical to what we were, I don't even know where I am anymore. Um, to what we were learning. Yeah. Um, so it's, it really planted a seed of, uh, of doubt of whether the, uh, the Catholicism was um, legitimate. So, wow. wow, that's really strong. You, yeah, you did all, all of that. Strong. You did all that in the session. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, the thing I was concerned about was the expressions, mm -hmm. um, especially on uh, in this one. Yeah. Um, and I think I drew it too small. So, would you suggest? I mean, is that why you draw it in eleven by seventeen? Is just so you get more ability to draw the expressions correctly yeah yeah sometimes it would be helpful if you just kind of like maybe draw 
twice as big as you normally do, just so you can figure out how to fit things in. Uh, and you know, just over time, you get a little. It gets a little easier to do. So thank you. Uh, was that was that the end of our sharing session? <laughs> oh, this is hello. Okay, so I did myself at twelve years old, wow. starting high school with pimples, glasses, and it's a public school, but we had an ugly school uniform. <laughs> and thinking, um, hoping to make friends, but thinking I'm extremely boring and having this sulking face that doesn't make people want to come and chat with me. So, wow. so that's my memory of starting high school. Well, that's fantastic. Tell me about your satchel on the ground. What was oh, this at, is the one we had to go to school. I'm old. <laughs> we had all our books and uh, actually it was a terrible one because my mother bought it secondhand, I think, and it wouldn't stand straight. It kept falling over. <laughs> so every time I was standing with my satchel next to me, it would fall over. And uh, anyway, that was, oh. uh, that was another flaw that I had. Wow. Thank you. That was fantastic. I love the watercolor. It's fantastic. Thanks. Very strong. Thank you. Hello. You're on mute. <laughs> Hi, thank you very much for doing this. Um, oh, no I don't work. remember if, if I've drawn myself, at least uh, maybe not since elementary school or something. So uh, here we go. I like it. Uh, so this is basically like me as a teenager and uh, I'm still interested or sort of preferred juvenile things, but you know, aging mm -hmm. and then kind of wide-eyed trying to take in the world and you know you've got obviously a maybe more malignant or rebellious uh image on one shoulder than the angel on the other <laughs> i love it yeah there's some there's some uh, comments in the chat they love the hair that's great <laughs> i love the batman shirt i think that, that's very it's setting a, it's setting a, a time frame a time frame what year was this do you think uh, like early 90s, so it was when they had those thick gilded t shirts you'd get the beefy tees. Yeah, <laughs> it's beautiful. Wow, that's fantastic! Thank you so much. Yeah, and just like one of the props of your character could be you know, their clothes, just you know, a name brand that's out of use now, just can quickly set the tone. Like wearing a Coca Cola shirt was a very 80s thing, nobody would do that now, I don't think. Um, is, is that it, Believer staff? Oh, well, we're running out of time, so it's time to go. Am I supposed to do intros or outros? Yeah, you know what? Thanks, everybody, for sharing your work. Thank you. I've had so much fun. I, you know, can we do this every Friday? Somebody's going to be mad if I say that too loud. Um, thank you, everybody, for sharing your work. Um, if you didn't get a chance to share your work, or even if you did, please post it on, on social. Um, the Believer staff and myself would love to see it. Uh, you can, uh, can the Believer uh, crew put the, the tags and everything in the chat um, with the hashtag Friday Night Comics. Um, also, if you want to uh, follow me, I'm pretty uh, prevalent on Twitter. My Twitter handle is Jamar Nicholas, one long word. And on Instagram is jamar.nicholas. You'd be surprised how many Jamar Nicholases there are in the world. Um, thank you so much. This has been fantastic. I love uh, that. I love everybody sharing their stories. And I love how powerful uh, uh, sharing memory is. I think uh, our imagination is really important. We have to protect it as much as we can. And also uh, documenting our past helps people in the future. So thank you guys so much for spending uh, an hour with me. And I hope to see you somewhere down the road. So thank you guys so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.